Hello and welcome back to the Home Lab. What I want to talk to you about today is soap bubbles. So I think we're all agreed that adults and children alike love to make soap bubbles. So what I want to talk about today is how are soap bubbles made, why do they take up the shape that they do and what forces are acting inside the bubble material. So you'll all know that when you blow bubbles, typically with a simple bubble blower, um, you produce bubbles that are basically spheres, that are basically spherical. You can produce other shapes of bubbles, but I'm going to look at that shape today. And we need to know a little bit about surface tension to explain why the bubble takes up this spherical shape and no other shape. So what I'm going to do now is discuss a little bit about what forces act inside the bubble to cause it to form a sphere. So to explain the formation of bubbles we need to know a little bit more about surface tension and in a minute I'll explain what the actual cause of surface tension is. But to begin with what I want to tell you is that water has a very very high surface tension. Uh, you might have seen uh, insects standing on the surface of water and they're actually using the very very strong forces of surface tension in the water to actually not break the surface. But you try and blow bubbles with just water. I'm not even going to demonstrate that because the result is obvious. You can't blow a bubble just out of water. But if you add a little bit of soap to the solution, what it does is it actually reduces the surface tension of the water. And if it reduces the surface tension, the forces in the bubble, the surface tension forces in the bubble that form, aren't too strong. In other words, they don't cause the bubble to completely collapse and break. So, when you add soap to water solution, you take the surface tension down from a number of about um, 75 millinewtons per meter down to about 25 millinewtons per meter. So you're reducing it by about a third. So that allows the bubble not only to form, but to remain in its spherical shape. So what I've got to do now is explain to you what the causes of surface tension and why do you always get spherical shapes. So to explain where surface tension comes from you need to know that water is a molecular fluid. It's made of molecules. Everyone knows about H2O. So um, here we go. Um, here's my little model of a water molecule and it's a really interesting thing. Here's the oxygen and there's the two hydrogens, so H2O, but it's not a linear molecule. It has this uh, sort of curved shape in its bonding pattern. So if it's a liquid you're going to have multiple molecules that are in close proximity moving around randomly. But here's the interesting thing. The oxygen is slightly electronegative. It's slightly more negative than it should be. And the hydrogen is slightly more positive than it should be. In other words, the molecule itself is neutral, but there is a difference in charge between the positive hydrogen and the negative oxygen. Now, Remembering that opposites attract, if the oxygen is slightly negative, what happens if another water molecule comes close by? Well, it will attract the positive hydrogen from the other molecule. And they don't stick together incredibly strongly. They don't form a bond like this, but they form what we call a hydrogen bond. Now, those hydrogen bonds can be broken quite easily, but the point is that there's now forces between molecules. And it's those forces that are the key to why bubbles hold their shape. So bear with me, we're almost there with the explanation. In the bulk of the water, you've got hydrogen bonds forming in all directions, so the forces are all balanced out. But if you think about the water on the surface, there's going to be hydrogen bonds pulling downwards from the top, but none pulling upwards because there isn't any water above the surface. So there you've got strong forces sort of pulling the surface down, and that is what causes bubbles to form. So we'll look at that next. So very quickly an explanation of a bubble. 
What you've got to remember about a bubble is that it's got a water layer with air on the outside and also air on the inside. So you've got a water surface on the inside with all the molecules, hydrogen bonds pulling inwards, in other words, pointing outwards, if you see what I mean, but into the water. And on the outer surface, you've got all the hydrogen bonds pulling downwards from above in as well. So the layer of water is sort of pulled inwards and it's that that causes the bubble to sort of come down to its shape. Now it's spherical because what it will do is pull equally in all directions and it will try and trap the largest volume it possibly can whilst trying to get as small as possible. And the shape that traps the largest volume but has the smallest surface area, of course, in three dimensions, is a sphere. It's interesting to note, by the way, that if you think about the air trapped inside the bubble and the bubble film pulling inwards, you've actually got the atmospheric pressure on the outside and the inside pushing in opposite directions, but you've got the elastic nature of the forces due to surface tension of the bubble pulling inwards. So if you think about that, the actual pressure inside a bubble is slightly larger than the pressure outside. And this is one of the things physicists like to calculate, but not something we're gonna to do today. By the way, you might have noticed that when bubbles hit a dry surface, a particular rough one, they almost immediately burst. But if they hit a damp surface, they can often land on the water that's on the surface or the bubble mixture and actually remain inflated. So here are some bubbles that are surviving, landing on the wet surface. So all the surface tension forces uh, work well to retain the bubble shape. And in fact, you can see how strong those forces are. Because if I try and pick the bubble up, um, if I don't burst it, it actually won't come off the surface. There is some quite strong hydrogen bonding between the bubble and the water on the bricks. So here's another really interesting experiment. If you blow bubbles onto um, a metal dish of water, you'll notice the one on the surface in the middle can be moved around really easily. It doesn't burst, but uh, as you move it, the forces on it as it slides across the water don't change, so it becomes quite easy to move. But once it's stuck on the side of the container, the forces between the bubble and the container, the metal, are really quite strong and it's actually quite difficult to pull the bubbles off the side of the container without bursting them. You'll also notice here that when I join two bubbles together and try and pull them apart, the surface tension and cohesive forces are actually really quite strong. They stick together and they don't really want to separate at all. So quite a technical video, but I hope you enjoyed that. And next time you blow bubbles, you'll think a little bit more about the surface tension forces pulling the bubble into its spherical shape and trapping as much volume as it can for the smallest surface area of liquid that it can. I hope also you know a little bit more about the shape of a water molecule and particularly hydrogen bonding in liquids. Anyway, do stay to the end of the video because I always leave a few links in the end and if you like it, click on like and subscribe if you'd like to. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I do look forward to seeing you then.